Praise the Lord. Welcome this morning. Welcome to our congregation here in the auditorium and welcome to you by live stream as well. We thank you for joining us. This is the day the Lord has made and we'll rejoice and be glad in it. Praise God. Amen. Father, we want to thank you for your presence today. We want to thank you that you are here. We want to thank you, Father, that you are near. We give you praise for it, Father. Your word says there were two or three are gathered together in my name. There am I in the midst of them. You're here, Lord, and we give you thanks for that. We give you thanks for our, our congregation here at the church, uh, both here in person and those who are joining us by means of live stream and others who will join us today via live stream or watching later. We believe that the word of God will go forth with great power and authority and your, your people will be touched and helped. Father, we just give you praise for it. We pray for every person within the sound of our voice that they will receive from you today exactly what they need. Praise the Lord. And we give you thanks for it, for that, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we're going to start off with one that's kind of a standard here. We shall see the King. And I think that uh, soon and very soon that we will, in fact. Praise the Lord. You know, uh, right now, um, this is the season, this is the season of the fall feasts of the Lord, and we are in the Feast of Trumpets right now, uh, actually Feast of Trumpets began Friday evening at sundown, and uh, so, you know, that, that the four, the four, uh, the three fall feasts, pardon me, the three fall feasts are yet to be fulfilled. For spring feasts have been fulfilled in Jesus' first coming. His, uh, the, the three remaining feasts will be fulfilled in his return to get his church at the rapture, the great tribulation period, and the millennial reign of King Jesus. And so we're in that season. But I believe that there's coming a day very soon when we shall see the King. Amen? Yes. Amen. Well, there's a blessed time that's coming, coming soon. Time. Say, 
coming soon. So soon and very soon, I think that trumpet's going to sound. I, I, I know that we are nearer to his coming than we've ever been. I believe it. I believe it. And uh, so we're, we're going to see the king. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. My, my. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My, my. Another standard here that you know, I've got a mansion just over the hilltop in that bright land where we'll never grow old. Now, if that can't make you shout, nothing will. Praise God. Where we'll never grow old. Amen. I've said it before, but if I had known what Rice Krispies would do to you, I never would have eaten them. You get up every morning, snap, crackle, pop. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, glory.
And if you know, this, uh, this land is not our home. Amen? It's not our home. Tell about how big heaven is. That was beautiful. I love that. Well, I don't know how big heaven is, but I, I know how big the New Jerusalem is. Yes. The Bible says that, think about this. The New Jerusalem, which is the capital city of heaven, it's going to come down from heaven as a bride adorned for her husband, Revelation says. And John the Revelator gave the measurements of it. Now, if you bring it over into modern measurements, what it comes down to is 1,500 miles wide, 1,500 miles deep. But the Bible says it's also 1,500 miles high. 1,500 miles high. Now, someone might say, well, you know, what, what, what's the big deal about that? Well, think of this. The International Space Station, okay, that's in orbit, it's only a little over 220 miles up, okay? So if you figure 1,500 miles, now, stay with me here, the New Jerusalem will extend out into outer space. Now, <laughs> Somebody says, what's the big deal about that? Well, because in the New Jerusalem, in our resurrected, glorified bodies, we will not be encumbered by gravity. That's good news. That's good news. We'll be able to go up and explore things. You're going to have an entire eternity to do it. Yeah, praise God. We're going to have to do a teaching on heaven. Praise Amen. God. Yeah. Anyway, I heard that this last week, and I went, whoa. Whoa! I mean, I, I you know, I, I've known of the dimensions of the New Jerusalem. I wrote about it and have talked about it, but I never thought about it. You know, fifteen hundred miles high. Whoo! Praise God! You start you start uh, meditating on some of these things, and uh, it'll just give you something to think about. Praise the Lord. One day we're going home. Amen. Yes. Lord, we just give you praise for your wonders and your mighty grace. Oh, we love you, Lord. We praise and worship you. You are the King of kings. You are the Lord of lords.
bless the Lord. Lord, prepare me, Lord, to be a sanctuary. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Bless God. through that praise God one more time. Praise God. Praise God.
receive your praise. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. He's worthy to receive our praise and our honor and our glory. All power, might, and dominion belong to him. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, we in this portion of our service, we want to, uh, we're going to take some prayer requests just here in a moment. But in this portion of our service, we want to worship the Lord with tithes and offerings today. And uh, the word says, bringing all the tithes into the storehouse, there may be meat in mine house herewith, saith the Lord, and see if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive, and I'll rebuke the devourer for your sake. The word says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men place into your bosom. Amen. For with the same measure that ye meet, shall it be measured again, Jesus said. And so this morning as our sister plays, and if you have not as yet worshipped the Lord with your tithes and offerings, uh, please do so at this time. want to let you know as well, if you're listening by, uh, watching by means of uh, live stream or even on our archive or um, even YouTube, uh, very soon we're going to open it up to where um, those who are joining us by live stream, you can worship the Lord with us via your giving as well. We'll have some more to say about that later, but uh, we praise the Lord. All right, sister. Yes, yes, praise God. Jesus came to me and brought the victory. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, we are victorious in Him. Amen. Um, any, uh, we want to at this time uh, in our service um, give you the opportunity if you have any prayer requests, prayer needs, uh, we want to pray for you. Brother Allen? Yeah, we're, we're uh, regrouping and taking another run at it. <laughs> Two years. Well, gives, gives us time to regroup. Yeah. <laughs> Sister? Uh, pray for Nick. He's getting his tonsils out this week. Nick getting his tonsils out. You know, uh, I, I, I will pray because that's no fun. I will pray for him. Wow. Yeah, it's, I had those out when I was like nine years old. So, I, yeah, it's... These, these young guys are tough. They're tough. Yeah. We will pray for you. Amen. Anyone else with a prayer need this morning? Amen. 
Yes. That, are you driving? or? Okay. That's, that's quite a drive. <laughs> so, I, I've, I've done that trip, but it was in a plane. So. <laughs> I get you. I get you. But they'd be prettier, though. Be prettier. So that, cause that's some pretty country up there. So amen. We sure will, sister. And, uh, you know, just a word on that, on the fires, and we want to pray for those families and such. Um, you don't realize the devastation that some of those areas have seen until you see the footage. I mean, entire neighborhoods and homes and businesses and, you know, and, and not to mention, you know, forests and all of that. So it's been quite a widespread thing. Yeah, like, well, yes, I'm not minimizing the lives by any means. No, there have been lives lost, unfortunately. But, uh, but yeah, just, I mean, I, you know, I, I, I had, honestly, I had read about the fires, you know, in news stories and what have you, but saw some footage the other night, and it is, phew, wow. Yeah, so anyway, we want to pray for those needs. Amen. Anyone else with a prayer request? Rachel? Um, my friend Elliot that I talked about uh, last week. Mm -hmm. He was really just in prayer. Sure. He's still struggling. Sure. And he's struggling to understand um, a lot of the things that are in God's word. Yeah. Amen. I understand that. So praise the Lord. I understand that we sure will. Amen. Don't, don't forget the voting coming up. Yes. And um, remember that the pilgrims came 400 and some years ago, and they dedicated this land to Jesus Christ. And so I don't know where we fit in with prophecy, but I do know that uh, it's good that we have God's word lived out in the United States. Yes. And I, I honest, I, 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 you know, I firmly believe that uh, by no means is God through with the United States. I don't believe that. And uh, so, amen. We need to pray. And uh, God, uh, you know, Jesus taught us, he said, pray, kingdom come, will of God be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. So we want to pray. And as, the, as, as elections and such are coming up. Anyone else, right before we pray, a prayer request? Anyone else? Ann? I just want to find out that you said it would be nice to hear some answers. Amen, sister. Amen. Amen. I agree. And we will agree with you on that. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Let's take these needs. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Emily's having hip surgery next week. <coughs> okay. Praise the Yes. Ne is it next week? It's next week. Whew. I didn't, I, I came up on me pretty fast. All right. Praise the Lord. All right. We will, uh, we will pray for that need, those needs today. Father, we just come to you, Lord. Your word says that we are to boldly come to the throne of grace, that we might find mercy and grace to help in time of need. We do come in the name of Jesus and we lift these needs up. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you are working in Brother Allen's request. Lord, you, you know what that is. And Lord, uh, you, you, your plans and purposes, you, you, nothing surprises you. And Lord, we just roll the care of this situation over unto you. We roll our brother over unto you, Lord, that you will bless him, that you will help him, Lord, that you will cause this thing to come together for your honor and your glory. And we give you praise for it. Father, we pray for Nick, Lord, facing uh, tonsillectomy this week. Lord, that you will watch over him, Father, that you will bless his doctors as they go in there and perform that surgery. Lord, that you will guide their hands and help our brother to bounce back as I know he will. But Lord, just give him a quick recovery, Father, in the name of Jesus. We pray for Ann as well. Lord, for these appointments she's facing next week. Lord, that there'll be some answers. Lord, that you will give some answers. You will give some clarity. You will give some, some uh, Lord, Lord, so, so she'll know what's going on, Lord. We, we, we just take authority over any kind of confusion, and we just ask you, Lord, for clarity in this situation, Father. And we'll believe you for a good news report. Thank you for our sister Nancy, Lord, and, and Kevin as they prepare to go uh, out west this next week. 
Lord, just bless their trip. Father, bless the vehicle they'll be traveling in. And we know that angels travel with them. And we believe that there will be angels on the top and the bottom and the sides and the front and the back. And over every moving part of their vehicle, it will function exactly as it was designed to by the manufacturer. And their trip will be blessed. They'll be able to get to their de destination. You will give them a clear path. Father, we pray in Jesus' name. Lord, that you will give them a blessed time with their grandchildren and family. And Lord, that you will just bless, bless, bless this trip in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for Emily as she is facing hip surgery this next week. Lord, that you will guide those physicians' hands and that you will help her to have a quick and speedy recovery in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for it. We thank you for this service today, Lord. We thank you for those who are watching by means of live stream as well. Lord, that you will touch them in areas of their lives where they need touch and need a touch from you. And Lord, we pray that they will receive that today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Well, we, we have a God who not only hears prayer but answers prayer. Amen. Yes. He hears prayer and he answers prayer. I'm so glad that, that uh, you know, we're not just praying up to the sky. We're, we, we've got a God who hears and answers. Amen. And uh, praise the Lord. Well, take your Bibles in your hands there today. And uh, let's lift them up before the Lord. And let's make our confession over the word of God today. And we believe it, so we make it. Praise God. And say with me, this is the word of God. This is the word of God. The word is a lamp unto my feet. The word is a lamp unto my feet. And a light unto my path. And a light unto my path. I receive the light. I receive the light. I believe the word of God. I believe the word of God. Because it is impossible. Because it is impossible. For God to lie. God to lie. Amen. Praise the Lord. And I hope that everyone at home does that with us as well. And, uh, you know, because it's important. Praise the Lord. Well, I got to tell you today, um, praying about, um, you know, as always, what to bring from the word, listening to the Lord, meditating in the word, all those things I tell you, the process that I go through. And uh, a little earlier in the week, and there's, there's another direction I was thinking about earlier in the week that we're going to develop later. Um, that's going to take me a little time, but there's another area, another direction I was, uh, I, I was praying about and, and, and the Lord was showing me. But uh, it seemed good to us and to the Holy Ghost to go the direction we are today. And I'm entitling this message this morning, How to Stay in the Race and Make it to the Goal. Praise God. How to Stay in the Race and make it to the goal. Now I got to tell you, just in the, um, just in the spirit of transparency, and this probably won't surprise most of you, but I am not a runner. I am not a runner. I never participated in track and field events on a competitive level except one time. I think maybe in fourth grade. We were having a relays day, and uh, I participated in some of those events, and I can remember, even though fourth grade has been a day or two ago, <clears throat> I, uh, I, seemed to, I, I remember getting at least, I may have gotten more, I remember at least one ribbon that I got for those events. I don't, nothing sticks out in my mind. I'm sure it wasn't because I won something. It probably said on the back of it, participant. That's probably what I got it for, just for showing up. Well, you know, but, but uh, I'm not a runner. In fact, I have said on more than one occasion, if you see me running, you'd better be running too. If you see me running, you better be running too because there is something bad coming down. Maybe it's a zombie apocalypse you hear so much about. 
Maybe it's, uh, I don't know, maybe the mothership from Independence Day is hovering over the city. I don't know what it is, but I guarantee if you see me running, something bad is coming down. You better start running too. I'm telling you. But even though I'm not a runner or an athlete, I am in a race. And if you are a believer, you are as well. And we're not running this race alone either. There are many other runners in this race. And not only that, and this is something that I find amazing. Not only do we have a lot of runners in this race, but we are, according to the word of God, and we'll look at this in just a moment. We are being watched and even cheered on, if you will, by those who have run the race before us. This is really the imagery in Hebrews 12, 12, 1, where the writer wrote, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. The race that is set before us. Well, since it says, let us run with patience, that tends to tell me the race that we're in is not a sprint, it's a marathon. Huh? It's a marathon. We want to pace ourselves, praise God, because the race we're in is a marathon. Had a little quote here from Vincent's Word Studies. Very interesting. Vincent wrote, witnesses, martus, does not mean spectators. But those, who have been, but those who have borne witness to the truth as those enumerated in chapter 11. You know, chapter 11 was the great hall of fame of the heroes of faith. Amen. Yet the idea of spectators, Vincent continues, is implied and is really the principal idea. The writer's picture is that of an arena in which the Christians whom he addresses are contending in a race while the vast host of the heroes of faith, who after having borne witness to the truth, have entered into their heavenly rest, watches the contest from the encircling tiers of the arena, compassing and overhanging it like a cloud, filled with lively interest and sympathy, and lending heavenly aid, unquote. Vincent's word studies. See, those who have run this race before us and have crossed the finish line are now watching us run our race. And it would seem, again, cheering us on. Hallelujah. But can I tell you this? And every runner, especially who runs in a marathon race, understands this. It is one thing to start the race. It's quite another to stay in the race all the way until the end and cross the finish line and make it to the goal to claim our prize. Now that is, I got to tell you, that is what I want to do. I want to stay in the race all the way to the end, cross that finish line and claim my prize, praise God. And I pray that each of us who name the name of Jesus want to do that as well. Paul in our text today that we're going to look at had this race in mind to which I refer when he wrote to the saints in Philippi. Turn with me, if you would, in those Bibles you held up today, whatever form you have them in doesn't matter. But let's go over here to Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3, Paul's letter to the saints in Philippi chapter 3. We are going to be looking at verses 12 through 14. Hallelujah. Philippians chapter 3, and if you're at home there and you're watching and you're watching live or you're watching later, take your Bible out, praise God, and let's turn in the Word. Amen. I know we've got folks watching from different areas, and, uh, but wherever you're at, the Word of God works. Amen. Praise the Lord. Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 through 14. And I'm reading this morning from the New King James Version of the Bible. Not that I have already attained, 
or am already perfected. But I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Father, we pray that you will bless the reading of your word today to the people's hearts and that you will bless this message today that it will be delivered in a way that will bring honor and glory to you and help to your precious people. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Now, like Paul, if you and I are going to stay in this race, which is the Christian life, and make it to the goal, which is finishing well and hearing the Lord say, well done at the end and claiming our prize, we're going to have to do the one thing Paul speaks of. But this one thing has three parts to it. First, Paul says, I forget. I forget. I forget the ground I've already covered. If I am going to stay in this race all the way to the end, I'm going to have to forget the ground I've already covered. Now, that is referring to the past. If I'm going to stay in this race all the way to the end and I am going to make it to the goal, I'm going to have to forget the past. How many of you know the devil wants to keep you enslaved to your past? The devil wants to constantly bring up before your memory your past, no matter what that was. And I don't know about you, but, but I can only speak for myself. I've made some mistakes in life. I've done some things that weren't right always. I've blown it in some areas. I have things that I have, have regrets about. And I tell you, if you live long enough in this world, you probably have a few regrets. Uh -huh. Now, now uh, the song, I Did It My Way, talks about regrets. I have a few, but then again, too few to mention. Well, I, I, uh, I, have, I have some regrets, but I'm going to tell you what. If I'm going to stay in this race, I've got to forget the past. I've got to leave the past in the past. Now, first of all, I've got to leave my failures in the past. We've all had failures. We've all had things we tried to do that didn't work out in the way we thought they should work out or that we wanted them to work out. We've had failures. Well, we forget our failures. Can I tell you something? The Apostle Paul had some things when he was Saul of Tarsus, especially, that could have been considered as failures. After all, he persecuted the Christian church. After all, he participated in the hauling off to jail and to prison Christian believers. After all, he stood and held the coat of, uh, of Stephen as he became the first Christian martyr and was stoned to death for his faith. I, I'm going to tell you something. Paul had some failures. But Paul had a lot of uh, successes too. And here's the thing, if you're going to stay in this race all the way to the end and make it to the goal, you're going to not only have to forget your past success or past failures, pardon me, but your past successes as well. See, we, 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 we can rest on our laurels and say, oh man, look what I've accomplished here and look what I've accomplished there and I've gotten this done and I've got that done. No, we can't rest on the past, even on our successes. Can I tell you, Paul had some successes. Paul, after all, was a Pharisee of the Pharisee. There was no one more zealous in the Jews' religion than was, was Saul of Tarsus. Saul of Tarsus sat at the feet of Gamaliel, who was the greatest teacher and Jewish orator of his day. Saul of Tarsus was educated in the finest schools. He had successes. But you know what he said? He said, all those things that I could gather up and glory in, all of those successes that I could talk about, 
He says they're just rubbish to me compared to the excellency of knowing Christ. Wow. Amen. That's what he said. Well, forgetting here is very strong in the Greek text. It means completely forgetting. It means erasing it from the memory. It means deleting it. Completely forgetting. See, I forget the other runners, too, if I'm going to run this race. That is, it is not my job to sit back and critique how they're running their race. Uh, you know, I mean, I, mean, I mean, a lot of times we try to set ourselves up as judges of God's other servants. And we're not called to do that. Oh, now, yes, we want to expose and identify false doctrine when it comes along. But I want to tell you something. It is not my job or your job or any of our jobs to set and criticize and critique another runner's race because the Bible says before his own master, he rises or falls. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. That's right. Now. I have to forget the other runners. Oh, I can hear the pound, 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 pound of their feet as they come up on me in the race and as they run by me and, and all that. They may get ahead of me. They may be lagging ahead of me or behind me, but it's not my job to sit back and critique how they're running their race. At the end of the day, and it would be helpful for all of us to remember this, in this race called the Christian life, at the end of the day, I am only responsible for my race and you're responsible for yours. Because each of us, folks, are going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Amen. We're each individually going to, going to give, a, give an account. And I'm not going to be able to go before the Lord and say, well, Lord, I tell you, I would have done more for you if thus and so hadn't been. Or, Lord, I, I would have done more for you if such, such and such hadn't happened or if they hadn't done this or if they hadn't said that. No, at the end of the day, I'm only responsible for my race. So I've got to forget. I've got to forget. But not only do I have to forget, I reach. I reach. If I'm going to forget the ground I've already covered, I reach forth to that which is before me in the race. See, I've run some of the race, but I haven't made it to the goal yet. That's what Paul said. He says, I haven't arrived yet. I haven't apprehended yet. I haven't been perfected yet, but I'm still in the race. I'm so glad, I'm so glad to know that I haven't arrived, but I have left, praise God. I haven't arrived, but I have left. Uh, years ago, I, uh, I, I started out in this race, and there's been here and there where I've kind of gotten off the track, and maybe I've tripped up in the race, but you know what? I've gotten back up, and I'm still in the race. Amen? Amen. Praise God. And, and, and you're in the race here. You wouldn't be here today. You're in the race out there watching. You're in a race called life. You're in a race called the Christian life. You may not be able to stand up very well. You may not be able to do a lot of things physically, but you're in a race. Praise God. Amen. And, and you see, I reach forward to that which is before me in this race. This is a runner, quite obviously, that is very serious about winning the race. The imagery that Paul used here, he, when he says, when he says uh, I press on, he says, I press on, and he says, I press toward, and he says, I reach forth. It's a picture of a runner that's straining every nerve and muscle, and he's using every ounce of strength he has for one purpose. What is it? To finish the race and, and win. Amen. Amen. You know, we have a... Uh, daughter-in-law who is a runner and she runs and runs and runs and runs and I'm telling you when you're a runner we had we had a a jogger run past the house yesterday I was out front with the dogs and and this guy went running by the house and, and I'm telling you what the, the, these people they, they they are intense they are serious about it 
I mean, you can see them. You can see it in their face. They're straining every nerve and every muscle, and they're, they're exerting their strength. They, they, they've got a goal in mind. If someone's a jogger, maybe they want to get their cardiovascular uh, thing going, and they want to get their muscles built up, and they want to get their endurance built. But I'm telling you, they are exerting themselves with everything they have to do. And, and in this race of the Christian life, I am quite literally running for my life. Amen. I'm running for my life. See, because I don't want to stand before the Lord one day and have him say, well, well. I want to stand before him and hear him say, well done. And, uh, and you know, I, whenever I think about that, I think about that time, and I've told this before, but I think about that time when we were in Perry at the church, and uh, I was in the basement kind of sweeping up things, getting things ready for our midweek service, and uh, I was getting kind of weary. I was kind of tired. I mean, have you ever grown weary in well-doing, amen? Amen. Yeah, we grow weary in well-doing. The Bible tells us not to. Sometimes we teeter on the edge of it. we got to get ourselves back on it. But, you know, I, I, I was getting weary. I was getting weary. And I swept up and I, you know, got it in my dustpan and I'm sweeping up and I'm getting things straightened up and what have you. And I, and I just, you know, maybe you know that uh, the Bible says that he will never leave us or forsake us. What's that mean? It means he's with us all the time, right? Amen. Yeah. Well, guess what? The Lord was with me while I was there in that basement. And I said out loud, I said, you know what? That's good enough. That's good enough. And I heard the Lord say these words. He says, that's the problem. I said, pardon me? He says, that's the problem. He said, far too many people of my people have the attitude, that's good enough. But he said, if you want to stand before me one day and hear me say, well done, you're going to have to do it well. Now, that was a revelation to me. He said, if you want to hear me one day say, well done, you're going to have to do it well. Not good enough, but well. See, I'm quite literally running for my life because... While I'm not looking at, at other racers, there are uh, people that are watching us run our race. There's people out in the world. Not, not only are there the saints who've gone before watching us, but there are people out in the world watching us run this race. They may not be consciously aware that we're running a race, but if they know that we're Christians, they are watching us. They're watching how we react. They're watching what we say. They're watching what we do. And see, someone could be basing their eternity on what we do, on what we do or don't do. And uh, praise God. Thank you, Lord. We'll do that a little bit later. Hallelujah. But, 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 but we're quite literally running for our life. Paul says, I reach that, that, that's a picture in the Greek text of, of stretching out, of, of stretching out the neck and, and straining. It, it, it's effort. Hallelujah. He says, I reach. I reach. All but lastly, he says, I press. <laughs> not, 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 only, not, not only do I, not, not only, <coughs> pardon me, not, not, not only do I forget, not only do I reach, but I press. <laughs> what am I pressing toward? I'm pressing toward the mark. I'm pressing toward the mark. And you know, that word that's, that, that, that's the mark there, that's translated the mark, really that comes from a, a Greek word that means a target for shooting. <laughs> it's what you aim at. It's what you're shooting for. And Paul says here, 
He says, I press toward the goal. It says in the New King James, but it says the mark in our King James Version. I press toward the goal or the mark. I press toward the target. I'm aiming at this target. And I tell you what, if you've got a target, the target's there because the idea is to hit the target. Mm -hmm. It's to hit the target. Not, not, not to, you know, you know if, if you're at a shooting range, you might get off the target a little bit. But the goal, the idea is you got that target and that's what you're aiming for. And that's what you're trying to hit. Paul says, I've got a target. I've got something I'm shooting for. And see, we need, we need to live our Christian lives like we're aiming at a target. We've got something we want to hit. We've got a goal, praise God. It's been said, if you shoot at nothing, you will hit it every time. <laughs> Think about it. Those who shoot for the spars may not always reach their goal, but they may at least hit the moon. And I'd rather hit something than nothing. Uh, amen. I, I, I've, I've always enjoyed it. I haven't gotten to do it for a long time, but I've always enjoyed going out to a shooting range and target practicing. Oh, there's something just gratifying about going out target practicing and, and, and shooting bottles. And sometimes you shoot plastic bottles and sometimes you shoot glass bottles. Sometimes you have a target, whatever it is. But I mean, you go out there and that whatever you're shooting at, that's your target. You know, I, I, I've told you the story about when I uh, went out with a dear brother that was in our church at the time. He was a Vietnam vet. You know, and I've thought about that later. Going out with a Vietnam vet with PTSD with loaded guns probably wasn't the best idea. I don't know. But we did. We did. And we, he was a member of the local shooting range there. And we went out and, and uh, he set up these plastic bottles. There was plastic milk bottles and pop bottles and different things that he set up. And... I had this little 22 caliber. It was a it was a copy of the German Ruger, uh, 22 caliber, and had had a magazine that set in set in the that the, the the stock of the gun, and uh, held six shots. I believe it held. So anyway, it, it it would keep empty in that magazine as long as you kept. You know, if you pulled the trigger, it it it, it fired. It was semi-automatic. And, uh, and, and, and we, would, we, would, uh, we went out there and shot. And uh, now I, I set my target. I, I, I set my bead on this one plastic bottle. I started pop, 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 pop. Nothing happened. And I didn't, I didn't realize it, but he had set his bead on the same bottle. So we're both out there, pop, 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 pop. <laughs> and I looked at him and I said, Said, said the brother's name. I said, brother, I said, we're, we can't possibly be that bad of a shot. We're both missing. Well, pretty soon, and I promise you this happened. Now, you may not believe me, but it did. I saw it. We sat there, and a little wind came up. And about that time, that bottle went, whew, it fell in half. We had both shot all around that bottle and shot it in half. Praise God. I couldn't believe it. That's what happened. It went, bloop. the top fell off it, and we shot the thing in half. Well, that was pretty good shooting, I guess. But, uh, amen. But the point is, it was our target. We were shooting for it. And see, if you don't shoot for anything, you're going to be guaranteed to hit it. But we, we've got a target that we're shooting at, and it's a prize the Bible talks about. Hallelujah. See, in this race, I keep my eyes fixed on that white line, the one that all runners must keep their eyes on, lest I be knocked out of the race or be disqualified. That's the last thing I want, I got to tell you. I don't want to be knocked out of the race, and I don't want to be disqualified. So I keep my eye on that white line. I keep my eye on the goal. I keep my eye on the prize. See, ultimately, we keep our eyes fixed, the Bible says, on Jesus. Come over here, another passage I want to look at real quickly. Hebrews chapter 12. 
Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2. Now, we referred to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 earlier, but I want to come over here to uh, Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2. Praise the Lord. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2. Thank God for his word. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2, and the writer whom I believe to be Paul wrote this. Verse 2 says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Paul is using, or the writer of Hebrews is using the same imagery, that of a race, and he says in this race, we fix our eyes, that is, we look unto Jesus. Looking unto means in the Greek to turn the eyes away from other things and fix them on one thing. Turn the eyes away from other things and fix them on one thing. I mean, you know, it's so easy to get our eyes on other things. But we're called to fix our eyes on one thing. You know, I've told you before, my mind seems to work pretty fast and it seems to go in different directions all at once. And so it's, it's easy for me to get distracted and, and you know, little things kind of distract me and, you know, my mind will go here and it'll go there and, you know, and I've got to get it back. But I'm telling you, in, in this in this race of the Christian life, we got to fix our eyes on Jesus. See, because if we're looking at all these other things, and, and we're looking here at this runner and that runner, and we're looking over here and we're looking over there, you know, we're going to get in trouble in the race. He says, looking unto Jesus. See, he, he is our ultimate example of running this race. I mean, if you know, Jesus ran this race before we ran it, and he ran it successfully. Praise God. He ran it before us, and he ran it successfully. And so he is the ultimate example. We fix our eyes on him. I like something Dr. Kenneth S. Wiest wrote in his word studies. He wrote this concerning this verse, quoting, The minute the Greek runner in the stadium takes his attention away from the race course and the goal to which he is speeding and turns it upon the onlooking crowds, his speed is slackened. It is so with the Christian. The minute he takes his eyes off the Lord Jesus and turns them upon others, his pace in the Christian life is slackened and his onward progress in grace hindered. See, we want to be fixing our eyes on Jesus. Listen today, folks, we're in a race. We're in a race that we must win. Can I tell you that? We're in a race we can win. How do we stay in the race and reach the goal? Well, first of all, we forget. We forget the past. We completely forget the past. By the grace of God, we get the past behind us. Our past failures, which we've all had, and our past successes, we forget them. We forget all, all of the things that we could rest in our laurels. We could forget all those things we could be so proud of. And we forget those things in the past where we've blown it and we've missed it. And those things nag us. No, we forget. But not only that, we reach. We reach. Because no matter where we've been, there's still something ahead. We haven't arrived at the goal yet, praise God. But we're on the way. So we continue to reach. And in this Christian life, this Christian race, we, uh, I'm telling you, we strain every nerve and every muscle and we exert every ounce of our energy. Why? Because we want to finish this race. We want to get to the goal. We want to claim our prize and hear Jesus say, well done. We press on. We press on. 
Not looking to the right, not looking to the left, not looking at this way, not looking at that way, but looking straight ahead because there's a goal line. And there's one that we're to be looking at, and his name is Jesus. The Bible says we are to fix our eyes on him. Praise God. He's our example. John Corson in his life application commentary said this, quote, We're in a race, folks, observed and cheered on by a cloud of witnesses. Who are these spectators? They are the ones spoken of in chapter 11, the heroes of faith. Shortly before he was to die outside Jerusalem on a hill called Calvary, Elijah and Moses appeared with Jesus on Mount Hermon in Matthew 17. They had come, if you would, to cheer him on. So too, Corson writes, it is my firm conviction that right now, you and I are being cheered on by those in heaven. Furthermore, I believe the clouds spoken of in 1 Thessalonians 4.17, in which we will be caught up during the rapture, are not of the cumulus or nimbus variety. Rather, they're clouds of those who have gone before us. Therefore, next time you feel like you're being wailed on, play on words, think of Jonah. <laughs> He's up there cheering you on. Next time you feel like you're in a fiery trial, look for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the stands. Next time you feel like you're up against a giant of a problem, remember David, the giant slayer, and take heart. Unquote. Wow. Wow. Yeah, we want to remember those who have gone before us. How do I know that I can run this race and win? How do I know that I can stay in the race and make it to the goal? Because there have been so many who have gone before me who have done it. And they're cheering me on today. Yes. Oh, I think not only of, of the ones that Corson mentioned there, but I think of, I think of Moses. I think of Noah. I think I, I, I think of I think of Samson. I, I, I think of all the greats of the faith. I certainly think of the Apostle Paul. I think of Peter. I think of all of them. But ultimately, I think about Jesus. See, because he ran a race like no other race. He ran a race, his race, up that hill called Calvary. He ran his race with not just a wooden cross on his back, digging down into the wounds that have been created by the cruel Roman scourge. That, that in itself was awful, but he walked down that path called the Via Della Rosa in Jerusalem. He walked up that hill, the place of the skull called Calvary, not just with the cross on his back, but with the weight of the sin of the world on his back. And he ran his race all the way to the end. He said, he said to his disciples, he said, you know, he said, I could ask for 10 legions of angels right now for my father to send them and get out of here. He could have listened to the, the taunts of the crowd who said, if you're the son of God, why don't you come down from there? If you can save others, why don't you save yourself? He could have listened to those taunts. And he could have listened to those who were making fun of him. And he could have listened to those who were blaspheming his name. And all of a sudden pulled those thorns out of that cross and gotten down off it. Had he done that, none of us would be here today saved. See, Jesus is our ultimate example. And he ran his race and he won. And I have to believe that if I will keep my eyes on him and you will keep your eyes on him, that by his grace, we will too. Amen. Amen. Let's pray this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the opportunity to have brought this message forth today. We thank you for the opportunity to have shared it. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your people who have heard it. And Lord, we give it to you today. You see, because ultimately the results are with you. 
You've been reminding me of that. I forget it sometimes, admittedly. But ultimately, the results are with you. And as I've been remembering this week, unless the Lord build the house, they labor in vain who build it. <laughs> unless the Lord watch the city, the watchmen stay awake in vain. But Lord, we know that you said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Lord, we thank you for it. We thank you for your people. We thank you for your word. We thank you, Father, for your many blessings. And Lord, right now, we commit your people unto you and the word of your grace, which is able to build them and give them inheritance among all who are sanctified. And Lord, I, I neglected earlier to pray for Elliot, and I just stop right now to pray for him. Lord, I know that you are dealing with his heart. And Lord, you're working in his life. We believe that you're drawing him. And I pray, Lord, that you will help him, that you will, uh, we, we take authority over the God of this world who blinds the minds of those who believe not. He, he sows confusion. And so we take authority over that. We believe for clarity of understanding for him. And Father, that he will see your light and respond to it and receive you as Savior and Lord. We thank you for him. We thank you for Rachel's witness to him. And Father, we believe that it will bear fruit in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Amen. And amen. Well, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Now, right now, we bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Blessed to be a blessing, blessed in everything you set your hand to, and your light shines this week before men, and they see your good works, and therefore they glorify your Father in heaven. And I believe as it grows darker in the world and grows brighter in the church, that there will be those who will say, what is it about you? And they'll want to know about Jesus, and we'll be able to tell them. Amen. Lord bless you and have a blessed day and week and uh, greet one another today and be blessed in Jesus name. We love you.